Welcome to Framework Fortune and welcome back Framework Fortune community. I'm your host Ben and it's time for the last rip, the Monday through Friday stock market series where we take a look at the top NYSC and NASDAQ gainers and especially the low floats and go over some of my trades for the day. So let's not waste a lot of time and dive right in. Now this episode I'm not going to cover a whole big list of ticker symbols because tomorrow is Friday and it is a holiday so the market will be closing at 2 p.m. for the holiday weekend for July 4th. The market will also be closed next Monday so I'm not expecting a whole lot of volume in the market all day tomorrow. We may see some quick pops in the morning. After that I expect a lot of selling because swing traders and long-term holders will be getting out of some positions or all their positions because a lot of them don't like to hold over a long weekend like this. Three and a half days is a lot of time in the stock market. A lot of different things could transpire. But as always, we're going to dive into some of my trades on the day. And I also want to do a small day trading mini lesson in this video because as I always say, you can learn from my wins as well as my losses and I think there's a good lesson to come out of the losses that I took today. But So ATHE announced it was granted a new US patent targeting a bunch of big words for Alzheimer's and Parkinson's. That is some decent PR. Patents aren't always that big a deal but when it comes to healthcare and big pharma, patents can be a very big deal and that's what we saw with ATHE popping up yesterday and after hours held through pre-market most of its gains and then ripped up today to 275 come back down again but it is still holding its gains and had another pop in after hours today and is holding right on that 200 on the five minute chart so this one could be a possible play tomorrow it is above all the EMAs and even has the 20 day crossed over. So we could see some volume quick pops on this, maybe up to that $3 area or back to 275 in the morning. MRIN, we've been talking about the last couple of days. I said on last night's episode that it could have a pop today. It did have a pop straight out the gate running from 11 all the way to $20. So if you caught that rip, very nice job. And then it just kind of sold off the rest of the day. But in after hours, it is holding around this $14 area. This is one that's had really good PR and been running above all EMAs. So we easily could see a quick pop out of this for a few dollars. And maybe up to 16 or 17 first thing in the morning. AUUD, which we've been all over. Today I tried to trade it in the pop this morning. And I only had a little pop and then pulled back and I had to hop out. In power hour, it ripped all the way up to 765, holding its gains through power hour. This thing has been bullish. We've been watching it, trading it all over the last couple of weeks. So I would expect that it could get some volume in the morning for a push. So there's not a lot on the NYSC. Uh, Transocean rig. This is a uh, shipping stock. Got a little pop at market open, but not a lot of volume on it the rest of the day. It did hold its gains. Sometimes shippers can randomly pop, and it is bullish above all the EMAs on the daily chart. Did just hit a high, so possibly could see it make a move tomorrow. Krispy Kreme IPO today. I talked about it a little bit this morning in the live stream. But I had already traded all my money before this IPO. But you can see it exploded from 1545 to 2192. I had said I had a good hunch that people would probably push this up. Maybe the Wall Street bets and Reddit trader because it's Krispy Kreme and the ticker symbol is D N U T. D nut. Not sure if they thought that one completely through in this day and age, but 
you're getting the point that I'm making here with Wall Street bets and Reddit traders wanting to push this up. So DNUT has held its gains all the way through after hours. If it continues to hold in the pre-market, we could see a pop on this again tomorrow. As you can see, I as you can see, I do have one share of DNUT. I bought it 1786 out of the this little area here. That's all I could afford after all my trading this morning. But I wanted to be a part of this historic day of Krispy Kreme IPO and <laughs> from my understanding a second time. So if you got any money off of DNUT today, great job. But keep it on watch for tomorrow as DNUT might pop. GBR was another trade I took today and this one could get a pop tomorrow as well. It's been climbing nicely on this trend line. Just with a little volume, only eight million a day, it was able to run from 6.15 to 7.35. So I'm expecting it, if it doesn't pop tomorrow, to probably pop next week. I got in at down here at 6.47 with 30 shares. I held through all of this, expecting it to continue to climb and had a stop loss in because I had to go out and do some stuff. And when I came back home, I was stopped out and you can see zero. So I stopped out exactly at my buy price. Didn't lose, didn't win. Just kind of one of those math plays. Legal Zoom, I think, will continue to run two days in a row off of its IPO. Has been running here in Power Hour. Ran from 37 up to 39.90, almost $40. Going to have to break $40 to continue its run, but over the next week, it's definitely one to keep your eye on. Normally, I start with the SPY, but we're going to put the SPY in the middle. So, the SPY continuing to push up today had that indecision candle, but the following candle was an engulfing bull candle, and so the market rose again, this time all the way up to 430 I would be surprised tomorrow if we break over 430. I'm expecting a sell-off, not anything crazy, but you know maybe a little pullback to 427, something like that. I don't think it can break that 430 right away. Next week we could see that, but long weekend, a lot could change, so no telling right now. Now also traded CUEN. It was making a nice triangle through pre-market. Came down, bounced off of that trend line, so I got in right in this area at 7.15, kind of at the top of this candle. Looking for it to break out of the triangle. It did go up to 7.38, but cracked and then had to jump out there, uh, taking a $14 loss on it. Triangles don't always mean that you're going to get a break out to the upside. This just means you're going to get a breakout. Triangles are nothing but consolidation. But if the triangle can start breaking out to the upside, then big moves can come after. But they also can just as easily crack down like it did here. CUEN could be one to keep on watch. Having some really good PR the other day. Still trying to hang out around the $7 area. KTRA is another trade I took today. They had positive results on their phase two trials. It was climbing up, making a nice little consolidation triangle. I got in right here at 275, looking for it to break out of the top of this resistance. And it did shortly to about 285. I was expecting to move up to $3, but never got there. Come back down and had to jump out again. $7 loss there. And here's another trade I took, BSQR. This had some good PR the other day, made a nice run, pulled back yesterday, so I was expecting a pop-up today. It did start popping a little bit, so I hopped in there after this indecision candle and the break of $5. I was looking for that break of 5 It did break up out all the way to 550 but that's all it had in it. Came right back down and sold off, so I got stopped out for a $10 loss there too so if you haven't figured out the theme of this mini lesson is i over traded i took too many trades i was too gung-ho yesterday was a little bit choppy but i was expecting the heat from monday and tuesday to come back in and it didn't 
there was a lot of plays with some pops and a lot of plays that I traded where they tried to break out but couldn't after the first or second shot of having patterns break down to the downside I should have sat back and been more patient and not took as many trades. Over trading as a trader can get you into trouble. Now these were all small losses because I kept my stop losses tight and managed my risk but they added up and I could have avoided those by taking my foot off of the gas pedal some. So tomorrow I'm not looking to go crazy gung ho. I'm going to take a step back look for maybe a quick rip on something just for a little bit of profit on the short holiday Friday. Next week we'll observe how Tuesday opens up, see which way the market's going to go, and then be patient and wait for good solid trades. Don't fall victim to trying to make your losses back. If you lose one or two trades in a day, it's probably a good time to call it a day or at least take an hour or two break before you come back to it and have your head clear. And that was a rookie mistake that I made today that cost me money even though I've been trading for seven years. But overall, the number one lesson out of this is if you go back and watch the live stream, if you wasn't there this morning, I was up on all four of the stocks that I traded a little bit in the green. Lock in profit when you have it. Don't be me, be a good trader, and lock in profit no matter what. So if you have any questions or you want to talk about any of the tickers I covered or maybe there's a play that you're looking at tomorrow, leave it in the comments below and I'll get to it as soon as I can. Appreciate everybody joining me. Stay safe out there. Until next time.